today baba says that i am the knowledgeful one and i speak to you the original knowledge and it is a very interesting term original knowledge and baba says that i never study i never come into the cycle of 84 births i never have a father teacher satguru but i become your father teacher satguru and i teach you the knowledge of this cycle of 84 births the knowledge of the past present and future and baba says that this is the original knowledge in me and you see it is very interesting that um <clears throat> this term original knowledge is something to think about you know in christianity they say that there is an expression called revelations they say they are revelations from god and of course they attach a different meaning to it but uh, there is a there is a yadgar or um a, a memory of how god comes and reveals original knowledge so first i'll talk about the word knowledge so you see baba says knowledge is the source of income and the only time in which we earn spiritual income is in sangam yoga from satyug to kaliyug we don't earn so even the money that we earn is basically you know earned with sin and spent in sin <laughs> so whatever qual- so when we say income the only time when we earn income is sangam yoga and the only time when we have knowledge is sangam yoga and what we think as knowledge in the world whether it is knowledge of the shastras or knowledge of science and other subjects that is not actually knowledge because it doesn't make you earn spiritual income so it only depletes you so even while so from the copper age all kinds of education started but with all that education we have only depleted ourselves so first thing is there is only one knowledge and baba always tells us the definition of knowledge is knowledge gives you salvation gyan se sadgati hoti hai and in the whole cycle we only get durgati we don't get sadgati so when we talk about knowledge nothing in the world except spiritual knowledge qualifies as knowledge and nothing in the world recharges the soul so if you come to know the laws of physics does it uh, does it affect your spiritual stage <laughs> no it doesn't so all that is okay to earn a limited income and then spend and all that is to live in the world or to fend for the body but there is only one knowledge and that knowledge is given by the ocean of knowledge then second thing baba says baba speaks original knowledge so there is um in the whole world whatever is spoken about spiritual truths is derived from this knowledge so you see that is why when baba comes baba is able to explain everything that is written in the scriptures in right light because everything is derived from here 
So, it is basically there is only one knowledge and everything else is derived and very inaccurately derived from this from the copper age onwards. And when Baba talks about original knowledge, Baba says the original knowledge that I give is about the soul, about Baba, about the three worlds, about your sweet home, about the whole cycle, the 84 birth cycle. So that is the knowledge that Baba gives. And um, you see, uh, this knowledge is very valuable because when I don't know that I am a soul, how do I become aware of my spiritual powers? When I don't know Baba, how can I build a relationship with Baba and draw sustenance from Baba? When I don't know my sweet home, how can I experience sweet silence? When I don't know my Sarvagun Sampanna Solakala Sampoon stage, then how can I go back to it? So, Baba gives us the whole knowledge and Baba says that with this knowledge, when you keep this knowledge in your awareness, then this knowledge becomes power and then you do powerful, purposeful, elevated karma with that consciousness which this knowledge generates and that karma again you know turns the tables and makes you the ruler of the world of happiness. So everybody knows that you know, karma changes everything and karma is important. But what is the seed of karma? The seed of karma is consciousness. And what is the seed of consciousness? The seed of consciousness is knowledge and yoga. So when, when I receive the true knowledge and I hold that knowledge in my awareness, which is I become Smriti Swarup. So I churn on the knowledge so deeply that that knowledge becomes a part of my awareness and on the basis of the knowledge when I have yoga with Baba because yoga is considering yourself to be a soul and remembering Baba. Now how can you consider yourself to be a soul and remember Baba without knowing yourself and knowing Baba. So this is why the only knowledge that exists which elevates our consciousness and which helps us reform our karma and helps us get better, that knowledge is what Shiv Baba gives. And Baba says that I am the only one who gives this knowledge and I only give it at this time. And I never study from anybody nor do I experience the 84 births. So I do not talk from learning, I do not talk from experience and that is why God is called the highest on high and the most wonderful. So you know. Um, if there is anything wonderful, then that is Baba because everything else is logical. <laughs> so you know, you, you do Vikarma, you deplete, you learn knowledge, you do yoga, you ascend, all that is logical. But what is magical is or what is wonderful is that Baba knows everything without learning, without experiencing. So that is why you know, God is called, uh, you know, uh, people say it's the God is the most wonderful and most difficult to understand. But Baba says, I explain it to you that this is how I am. I am the seed and I contain everything and it is pre-recorded in me. I do not have to learn, I do not have to experience. And... Uh, 
and anyways you see if you think it think about it like this that those who experience everything forget it yes so if experience was equal to remembering then how is it possible that the one who takes 84 births forgets it <laughs> so if if it's possible for somebody to experience everything and remember nothing then it is also possible for somebody to not experience anything and remember everything <laughs> so this is how it works and Baba says these are things that you need to understand and Baba says that I give you the knowledge that there is only one world and this this world itself changes from heaven to hell and you see before Baba we could never think that it is the same world that changes from heaven to hell yes we always thought heaven is somewhere up above and hell is somewhere down below and then we don't even know this is hell and um, in yesterday's Murli or day before yesterday Baba says you are in Kumbhi Park Nark you are the, in, in the greatest depths of hell and that is also something that we need to recognize through knowledge because we neither recognize that this is hell nor do we know that this itself was heaven and Baba tells us this gives us this whole knowledge and Baba says that this very world will turn heaven when you you invoke your deity consciousness so when you start remembering yourself as a deity when you remember that you were a deity and you were complete with divine virtues then this world will itself become heaven so Baba gives us the method to shift hell to heaven and gives us this interesting knowledge that uh, this very world was heaven and then it changed into hell and another very important thing Baba tells us today is that uh, it is wonderful knowledge to understand that the same soul takes so many different bodies plays so many different parts and you see before Baba gave us the light of knowledge it was practically impossible for us to think about you know think about the fact that I was in a different body and played a different part yes and Baba says that people think that Saraswati and Lakshmi are two different souls but they are not that same Mama Saraswati in Sangam Yuga becomes Lakshmi it's the same soul so once you do your Purusharth you change your body you become a different person and then when you leave the body you take on another body another role so it's all it's this is something that takes a long time to wrap your head around it because we are so body conscious that we can't even imagine ourselves in different bodies <laughs> we, all, I, we only think that you know this is the only body and I remember that uh, as children all the movies that we saw about rebirth so you know in those movies they always show that uh, this a particular actor or actress so they are in the same body you know it's the same double role <laughs> so you have the same body same features same uh, nature in both the births and it's always depicted like that so nobody has ever been able to imagine that when a when a body changes when a soul leaves one body then it takes another body which is completely different from the first one and uh, Baba says that the other law that I tell you is that as you take bodies leave bodies you deplete yourself so your last role and part is is very different from your first one 
and it is like the difference of day and night. So think about the, your first body as a deity and your first part as a deity and then think about today's part. Today's is even better but you know yesterday's when we were not, <laughs> we didn't belong to Baba at that time. What was our part and we had changed so drastically. So Baba gives us all this knowledge and in the light of knowledge we are able to see our whole journey. And then Baba gives us the whole calculation. Baba says that, you know, there is maximum 84 births and minimum one. So uh, not everybody takes 84 births. There are only 9 lakh in this world who have taken 84 births. So just think about um, this interesting fact that only 9 lakh will have complete consonance with this knowledge of 84 births because only 9 lakh carry the memory that we had exactly 84 births and um, others have less than that and um, it is very interesting to understand that as a spirit uh, when weighed on a uh, when weighed on the you know, on the index of our spiritual journey, we are at different stages. Yes, so maybe somebody has a young body, but that could be a, a soul in its 84 birth. But maybe somebody has a very old body, but that soul may be in its second birth. <laughs> and then you see, um, how we feel about the whole drama also shifts according to that. So have you seen that? Um, I remember there was this one brother, he came for the course and he said, I don't feel this world is, uh, you know, fit for living. And he was only 17 in physical age. So I say, and he said, when I say these things, my parents tell me that you must see the psychologist and you are in depression and <laughs> something has overtaken you and then uh, my father drinks and I don't understand why he drinks, what is the need to drink, why can't, why can't you be happy just like that. So maybe they are committing some sin so they have to just drink and forget it. So he said all these things and I was really, you know, I, I was thinking that you can, if somebody doesn't know the, the laws of spirituality, then they could be very impressed by this, this talk. But when you know it, then you know that it's not a miracle. It's just that this is a old soul in a new body. <laughs> and then, so Baba says, I tell you all these secrets and then, the biggest secret that Baba tells us is that those who were deity souls will only get this knowledge and will do the Purusharth and then again become deity souls because they have it in their memory track. They have it in their memory track, the Purusharth they did last time. So whatever you do is nothing new <laughs> and you don't do it the first time. And nobody can ever do it the first time. So Baba gives us so Baba gives us this original knowledge, and um, it, you have to really deeply think about the fact that this is the only knowledge, and there is no other thing that qualifies as knowledge, because nothing can lead you to salvation. Nothing can be a source of income. Only this knowledge is a source of income and it makes you ascend. And everything and even the scriptures or the spiritual knowledge that people read in the world or study in the world, it's all derived from here. Because in the copper age, when we, uh, when we, you know, we have fallen down and we are in our less perfect state, then we remember this knowledge and write inaccurate interpretations of this knowledge at that time. So all that we get in the form of scriptures is also inaccurate. 
So Baba says this one thing. And then Baba today says that all the relationships in Kali Yuga are basically bondages. And Baba says that you must, in order to free yourself from the bondages, you must know that there is no relationship the way you perceive it in Kali Yuga, but there is only one true relationship I have with every other soul, that is the relationship of a brother and sister. Yes, so Baba says that all the relationships are basically bondages in the world. And why are they bondages? Because you see, there is a lot of, uh, what do you say, there is a lot of um, baggage associated with every relationship. And you see, there are no relationships which are just love, based on mutual love and respect. Is there any relationship in the world which has this equation that every that e, we have we just have to have equal love and respect for each other? No, there is no such relationship. Every relationship is about what I have to do, what they have to do, how you know how they have to respect me more and I have to respect them less and how they have to love me more and I have to love them less. So it's all about this and there are very distorted equations which are set by social standards and those equations give rise to expectations. So you see that even between a bro young elder brother and a younger brother so the parents will teach you that the elder one has to sacrifice and the younger one has to enjoy. Yes, but then if that happens for a long time, then there is a grudge and animosity that builds between them. Do you understand that? Then I remember there, were, there was a Mata and she told me that my elder brother, my elder son, is very responsible and my younger son is not that responsible and um, all the time we used to treat our elder son as he is, he is responsible and he is elder. So we thought that that is the right thing to do and we have read in the scriptures that you know, younger brothers also respect elder brothers. So we thought that it was normal and natural. And um, the, elder, the elder son was given a prominent seat at the dining table everywhere, you know, he was treated well. And the younger one was treated like rubbish because <laughs> according to the parents, he was rubbish. So then what happened is this younger child uh, once he got a very good job, after he grew up, he got a really good job for himself. And that job paid him more than the eldest son. So whatever the eldest son was earning, he started earning more than him. And then he came home and the first thing he did was, he sat on the chair on which the eldest son sits on the dining table. And he... And he told his mother, from this day you will treat me like you treated him all his life and that is not enough. You will treat him the way you treated me. And he said, otherwise I will leave the house. And the mother said that I did not know that this is something that's going on in his head and I never knew that he could be so bitter about it. I thought that it was okay, but um, I guess it was not. And then you see, we think that in relationships, it is perfectly okay. So, you know, we have this wisdom in the world where they say that uh, you always, so, wali gai ki laat bhi khani hai, they say. So, they say the one who earns better, that does better, 
then you even get a beating from them but the one who doesn't then they are less than the one who does but do you know that these things are not true these are just made up and then you see um, uh, souls who are in the role of parents they think that it is okay to slap the child beat the child abuse the child in front of 10 people and they think that the child is their property and what does it do to the child it creates a lot of trauma so in this in this whole world the way relationships are defined and how, the way um, these definitions invoke expectations in every person so these expectations and then the fulfillment of them and the non-fulfillment of them they all lead to various distortions in the psyche in the you know in the sanskar and many things are happening because of this and you see uh, just take for example there are two human beings one is a guru one is a shishya and then the guru will say i am perfect and the shishya will say you are perfect and i surrender to you and um, slowly gradually the shishya finds out the guru is not that perfect and then he is not capable of taking responsibility of his life and karma and then the shishya feels betrayed but then why did he feel betrayed because because he didn't understand that no soul is capable of taking the responsibility of your life and karma and uh, you see these are the expectations that we have because we are always told that it is like this and then you say that a friend in need is a friend indeed but can any human being be a friend these days so you know you say you were not there when I wanted you, you were not there when you were needed by me but then can they be there when you need them? Is it possible? It is not possible for any human to be available for any human in the time of need always. Sometimes they can be there but always they can't be there and then you feel betrayed by your friend and people say that you know when I was suffering the most my friend was busy partying so what should they do? Kill themselves for you. So <laughs> they, can, they cannot do that for you. So they, will, they have a life of their own. So the thing is, you see, we get into this trap of how relationships are defined and then we think that all the expectations we have are normal and natural in, the, in those relationships and then we feel betrayed and when those expectations are fulfilled it's even worse because we become dependent so in both the cases you know in case of fulfilled expectations you become dependent and then you're good for nothing because uh, the other person is doing everything for you and then otherwise when they are not fulfilled then you feel betrayed so you see uh, I have seen this thing that uh, when children grow up, the children who receive everything also complain and the children who receive nothing also complain. So those who receive everything say that uh, my parents didn't take the, you know, they were not mindful enough to give us the training to become independent. And those who receive nothing say that my parents could have done a better job loving us or caring for us. So it's it's always you know this distorted thing that happens because of the bondages that we have and even in the case of you know husband wife and all people say okay the husband should earn and the wife should the for the wife it's optional but for the husband it's mandatory and if he doesn't earn then he is not fulfilling his greatest responsibility <laughs> but what if he is not capable enough of earning then what do you do you just feel ashamed you feel betrayed you feel you have a bad husband and then what if the and then you see there is this thing about loyalty and who can be loyal the person who has a sanskar of loyalty 
anybody who doesn't have a sanskar of loyalty cannot be loyal to you <laughs> so if they are loyal they are loyal if they are not they can't be with you they can't be loyal to you that's not possible so but then you take it as an insult to yourself and then you keep beating yourself up for that that maybe i'm not beautiful enough eligible enough good enough polite enough maybe i'm not you know interesting enough <laughs> so that is why this is happening <laughs> so these are the things that are happening so baba says that now it's time that you understood that these are all karmic bondages and everything that's being told to you about relationships is completely flawed and the only truth is that everybody is a soul and the only relationship we have with each other is that of a brother and sister which means that there is no expectation of vice and second thing there is there is a commitment to love and respect so the only thing a soul owes to another soul is love and respect that to spiritual love which manifests in the form of good wishes and good feelings so when you have this spiritual love and respect for each other that's the only uh, that's the only thing that you owe to another soul nobody owes anything else to you and you don't owe anything to anybody and if somebody is not giving you love and respect you start giving it and then they will start giving it back to you so that's the only thing that everybody owes to you and you owe to everybody and nothing else and baba says you don't you don't expect anything from anybody i am your parent i am your i am the one you have all relationships with so nobody is your father teacher satguru friend guide mother <laughs> surgeon i am your everything so i will give you all that you need you take it from me and to every soul you just be loveful and respectful and again you know according to the because there's a system where you physically you know you are um, contributing something and taking something so it's a setup where you are you know living in a world where somebody is doing something for you and you are doing some something for them so that part remaining intact so you know that when you live in a house when you live in an office they pay you you do the work even when you when you live in a house somebody is cooking somebody is earning somebody is cleaning so you do that responsibility otherwise nobody owes you anything so nobody owes you emotional satisfaction no is nobody owes you you know responsibility of your life and karma so you see there are children who get married and then they blame their parents that you did a bad job of fi- not finding the right person for me and uh, then they blame their parents for all their life so you must understand that whatever karma you do you are responsible for them nobody is responsible for your life and karma so don't say i did this because this person said this and because they are my parents and teachers so i have to listen to them no baba says there is nothing like have to listen to them because you have to weigh everything you listen and then do what is right according to shrimat because if you don't do that then you will suffer because of the karma you did and nobody will take responsibility for it nobody can take responsibility for it so baba says that whatever uh, you know vicious expectations you have expectations of lust anger ego attachment greed so you expect people to feed your ego feed your attachment feed your you know hunger of lust because they are in a certain relationship so baba says no nobody owes you any vicious gratification nobody owes you any emotional satisfaction nobody nobody is here to feed your ego 
nobody is here to take responsibility of your life and karma you there is only one thing that you have to pay attention to love and respect and everything else you have to do for yourself by keeping company with baba taking guidance and power from baba so this is something that baba teaches us om shanti